Yeah, you did not want to be one of those poor losers who got a pink slip at Disney. Because it's the Ides of Mouse. It's all coming to an end. If you were around for a decade, if you were around for a week, it didn't matter. You were getting the cut. You were getting the boot. And there's or something. But we don't really know what's going to happen with this man quite yet. We'll, we'll, we're just going to say this right now, right off the bat. We're not going to get into the, the nitty gritty bullshit. Like, we're not going to be looking at affidavits. I do that on my day job, thank you very much. I don't need to read his police report. All I care about is, well, aren't they just going to do the obvious thing and just do some wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey bullshit and just slap someone else in there? Why don't they? I don't know. Yeah, um, you know, I think it all has to do with timing because if this exact same event, so what we're talking about here, just Jonathan to give Majors. the most, yeah. yeah, Jonathan Majors, the most basic version of the story, uh, last Saturday night, uh, he was arrested um, for assault um, against his girlfriend. Um, they've, they've done a really, really bad job of keeping it. The, her identity secret because they were supposed to but it's clearly his girlfriend that he was um you know had these charges brought against him for and since then there's been very little movement legal like legally about this so um that's kind of everything we know for a fact i mean there's all this other stuff out there now his his lawyer is running like major damage control and releasing text messages now but big mistake um, she is fucking everything up his lawyer yeah, like, probably <laughs> we'll leave that for the drama channels but yeah that's just my point of view on it but so it all what i was saying is it all has to go to do with timing because had this event happened but just transplant planted in like late january or like the beginning of february 100 mm -hmm. he would have been fired by now because that would have been the lead up to the latest ant-man movie and they they would have been forced to make a decision and because we're kind of in the post ant-man 3 world now where disney has made you know 90 95 percent of the money they're ever going to make on that movie has already been made and so they have a little bit of time here to just kind of simmer on this and let things play out and then you know they'll make a decision before the next time we see his character which will be loki season two which which was going to come out this summer but i think that is now probably in jeopardy even so um yeah i guess that's kind of where i where i sit on why he hasn't been fired yet um but yeah what what do you think you know at the on one hand i i do think that maybe they took a look at what happened with the the quick dismissal of justin roiland and how that whole thing worked out but what's crazy about that is that that was a court case that had been quietly and without outside of anyone's eye been happening for like a year or so and this is something we knew about the moment it fucking happened. So it's it's going to take even longer for whatever happened here to work itself out. And I think it, unless they have him like dead to rights on a morality clause violation, because in the post Me Too Hollywood morality clauses, you know, exist in much the same way as they did back when the church ran things, you know, but it, yeah, it, in this instance, I'm going to I'm not going to go men's rights activist on it here but it almost does seem like you know to an extent that maybe you know like protocol and just like the oh woman calls police and there might have been abuse going on by default the man is arrested that's what happens in New York state and mm -hmm. and the you know and that you know has its own problems but the the reality of it is it could have been something that could have, you know, she maybe was just having a psychic break psychotic break and he called the police about it, and now he's paying the consequences for it. Should he have everything stripped from him? I would be—I don't think so. But whether or not Disney's going to do it, I think they absolutely are. The, 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 but it's unfortunate, because he was the one thing that this whole phase whatever, 5-4, had going for it. He was the only interesting thing. And he was, and he was the through line from the TV to the cinema, and now the, it's just this big question mark. And, well, I guess we're going to have to see, because like, there's a whole culling happening across you know, the whole company, essentially, at this point. If, if you're a TV project like Loki, yeah, it's suspect. They might just cut their losses there and like leave him out of it and just rewrite it so that they can still get it out. But 
TV isn't really making them money anymore. They're not getting the Disney Plus subscription numbers that they would like, from what I gather, from what I've been hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, let me ask you this. If, hypothetically, say, he does get uh, fired, what what do they do? Like, what do they do? Because they've been, you know, they're still in the beginning stages of building up this villain as sort of the Thanos of this next, these next three phases. And so what, what do you think Disney should do as far as their, their villain problem? That's a, a good question. Cause either you find a totally new villain or you just, you know, just say, Oh no, th like it's actually this incarnation that looks like this that you have to worry about and it's not the jonathan majors um you know, you know kang anymore it's um michael fassbender with blue paint on you know or something like that like they just find some other actor to stick into the role but they could also just go completely you know crazy and just go with a new villain just find a totally different villain <laughs> to be the big bad and just have this whole thing be a unfortunate exercise in futility as far as the storytelling is concerned. Was there anything else you wanted to say about, about this situation before we move on? Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to give my thoughts on that, that last point. Um, um, so, like, basically... You know, they could, I mean, Disney has experience with this with Don Cheadle and Terrence Howard. So they can just pull one of those and act like nothing ever happened. But, um, you know, Ant-Man ended on them defeating Kang. So in all, you know, likelihood, they could just act as if Kang was the villain for that movie. And then just say that those after credit scenes at the end of Ant-Man are just a wash. And, you know... They just you just wash them out and and pretend like they never existed and you know kang was the villain for ant-man and just ant-man um so they could do that but you know i think they should you know nobody nobody really liked ant-man and a lot of people are very down on the mcu right now between that movie and eternals and um all of the tv shows and so you know in some ways they could use this as an opportunity to revitalize the MCU by doing Doctor Doom because that's what they really should have been doing this whole time is Doctor Doom. That's what everybody wants. That's what everybody's been calling for. And for some reason, you know, they they they've had him on the back burner. I feel like I feel like they are gonna get to him eventually, but I think now's the time. Now's the time. This, yeah, yeah. It's like, unless they're gonna pull Galactus out of their fucking asses, you know, and just you know, and just go full Fantastic Four on this. But we need a Fantastic Four movie to do that. So mm -hmm. they're they're just kind of full of shit, in my opinion. They need to figure their shit out, whatever it is, because yeah, like there there there's no coherence to this storytelling, no urgency to it either. And that's been the, the biggest beef I have with a lot of. Disney, Marvel, Lucasfilm projects. I'm looking at you, Mandalorian. You're getting really fucking boring. But yeah. that's a that's a different conversation. The major problem for Marvel going forward is that they are losing one of their key cogs in the machine. The thing that kept those those grubby little animators working at their workstations, pumping those pixels out and getting those 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 giant you know widescreen comic highlight reels going. And, you know, that lady was Victoria Alonso, and she has an interesting career. She was an actress, an actress who realized, oh, I have no power. So then she became a producer and somehow became like the post-production executive for fucking Marvel. And now she's not because apparently she violated her contract by promoting a movie she produced that, you know, was Oscar nominated Argentina in 1985. And this is a juicy little story. It's very funny. It's very weird that this is so brazen and out in the open like this. Because Disney was just like, yeah, she's, she's fucked. She's gone. She's, she's chopped liver. We're done with her forever. Fuck her. And now lawsuits. Like, how many lawsuits is this company going to have to deal with just to <laughs> get rid of all the administrative bloat they apparently have? Oh, man. It's, yeah, it's, it's going to be rough. Um speaking of rough did you read like the vanity or no it wasn't vanity fair it was variety the variety article about this yeah. how how absolutely brutal that opening paragraph was because i would encourage anybody to go look at it right now because it's basically they they recall this story recently from the uh 
uh, the premiere of, um, oh God, what was it? It, it might have been. Uh, it was Argentina 1985, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And she, she was on the red carpet and she saw that two of the photographers on the red carpet were females. And she called them over and made them take pictures with her. And then she said like, like two women photographers, us women, we aren't going anywhere. And then eight days later, she's fired. It's just absolutely brutal how they framed the whole article on, on Variety. But um, yeah, it's, it's kind of, I mean, it makes sense. She um, was running the VFX department into the ground. People have been complaining all over, you know, uh, the complaining parts of the internet, like Reddit and 4chan and stuff about their, their, um, their jobs, their VFX jobs, um, and how, you know, Marvel was running them into the ground, you know, after hours, late hours, bad pay, um, death schedules. It's the baton death march of, 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 of of visual effects animation. And now like a lot of those companies are being like, yeah, we're not going to fucking work for you anymore. Disney get fucked. Oh, you need Mando to look good. We're not going to do that for you anymore because of this lady. Yeah, and so she ran that department into the ground, and you know, beyond that, um, I don't know. She's she's out there saying like you know accusations of sexism, accusations of racism, but it's like I don't know if that really holds water because why then did they allow you to work at this company for seventeen years and then just suddenly like oh we're racist now you know we yeah. just decided we're so it's like because that doesn't yeah. really hold water because here's know? the deal they took her cue on her and Kevin Feige's cue on who to hire. Like, you know, like all of the people who populate Marvel studios, you know, are like, are there because they agree and think exactly like Alonzo and Feige do, you know, like they are prophets of the message as it were. And they, the message will carry on forward. And that message is very progressive. That message is exactly her values and her virtues, despite bumping heads with the state of Florida and, you know, like those political realities. But yeah, like it makes no, this company is totally down for her identity politics. They just didn't think she did a good job and they had cause to show her the door. So yeah, this lawsuit is going to be quite, quite frivolous when you, when when it gets right down to it. But I believe she has hired the same attorney as our next segment. Okay. If, if, yeah. if you're ready to move on to it, because Kathleen yeah. Kennedy also had a pretty fucking bad month. This is kind of old news for the internet. But you know, Kathleen Kennedy is also getting sued by a producer named Karen McCarthy, and Karen McCarthy and Victoria Alonso have the same lawyer, and that, I, that is well, also Chef's kiss today. But Kathleen Kennedy is in deep trouble. She hired this lady to, she wooed her, she courted her, she stole her from Apple TV Plus because they have a show with Colin Farrell called Sugar, a detective series that they were like, hey, work, come work for us. And she was like, actually, I got a better offer. I'm going to work in Star Wars, multi-year contract, all those royalties and residuals. You know, she's going to have it made. She's going to be one of the most powerful female producers in the industry. And then after, like, relocating and, like, signing, the, I think contracts were signed, she was working. They were just like, no, you're fired. We're, we don't want to move forward with this contract. Here's $5,000. Yeah. To, yeah, to, apparently she did one day's work. She literally worked for one day on the show. And then, and the, yeah, yeah, and then they're just like, here's five grand. And, yeah, see you later. And, see you later. And um, I don't know. This is... Like, I, I think out of all these stories, this is probably the one that I have the least to say about only because <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy has been a monster for a long time. And this is just her continuing to be a monster and yeah. continuing to continuing to run Star Wars into the ground. And, you know, and for that matter, probably Indiana Jones, too. I mean, we'll see. But yeah, yeah. If, if you believe the scuttlebutt from the 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 completely unverifiable and, you know, like weirdo, you know, sets of YouTube commentators and like rumor mongers like Doomcock or like Midnight's Edge. They have been feasting on this. But then I remind myself, these are the same dudes who have been telling me for five years that this woman was going to be shown the door and it hasn't happened. Like how long can she keep getting away with it? You know, it's like, she is like Donald Trump. It's like, when is she going to get indicted? Oh, maybe soon. But when you get down to it, 
she is in control until her contract is up from what I understand. And it was just a question of, well, am I going to get all of my shows out so I can maximize my golden parachute or what? And if you believe the rumor mongers, Iger had a one-on-one -on -one with her and made it clear that she was going to be taken, you know, out and skinned if, you know, Indy five didn't turn a profit because nothing ha like she and she also one of the other things is getting an actual star wars movie in theaters before 2024 and there's no mm -hmm. human way that that could happen no it's not feasible 2025 because yeah the gears aren't moving it's not obvious that they have anything in place for you know the the, the theater anymore for star wars because they keep on canceling those projects like D D, benioff and weiss were going to be doing a star wars thing Ryan Johnson yeah. was going to be doing a Star Wars thing. Three or four other people have had Star Wars projects lined up and go away. And it's like, well, who is doing anything with Star Wars besides Filoni and Favreau? And I'm losing faith in those guys, too. <laughs> like, Gilroy is the only reason for me to come back. Yeah. Yeah, it, it continues to be a huge miracle that, you know, that show even is still a thing. Because at this point... Star Wars, for the most part, other than Gilroy, is such like a, it's such a, it's, it's a tainted, like, product. And I see all these announcements for these directors that are signing up to do Star Wars stuff. Um, like, like the Daniels. Skeleton. Yeah, Daniels. Yeah. And I'm like, what are, what are you doing? You're, you're going to, you're going to destroy your career before it even began. And like, yeah, Daniels. And then the other day, um... Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Green Knight guy, David Lowry, yeah. signed up for to do a couple episodes of that same show, Star Wars Skeleton Crew. And so it's like, you know, you wonder what these guys are thinking, and it's probably the money. That's yeah, probably. it's probably what it is. So let's yeah. move on from Kathleen Kennedy, because they just keep on coming. Our man, our man with the plan on the inside, Mr. Toy Biz himself, Ike Perlmutter, his, his reign of terror has finally ended. You know, he he finally got dusted, as it were, because they, 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 they these aren't the only layoffs. Like, there's like 6,997 other people who lost their jobs. Yeah. But, like, why did why did it take so long to wrest this man, you know, from you know, the, the control panel of Marvel? Like, how is he dug in so tight? <laughs> I'm guessing that it probably has to do with his position... Um, going into uh, the Disney uh, buyout of Marvel, because if people don't know, um, Perlmutter was like the the chairman of Marvel when Disney bought them, and I'm sure he stipulated all of these things in his contract after Disney bought bought them. And um, yeah, basically he he was in charge of Marvel Studios or he had a big hand in Marvel Studios up until about 2015. And then Kevin Feige basically showed him the door and they, they created a new, like, like basically a token, uh, uh, division called Marvel Entertainment that was literally just like toys and comics. And um, they basically just were like, hey, go do your thing over there while, while we don't pay attention to you, essentially. And so he's been doing that since 2015. And um, word on like the street is that he's always been trying to get back at Fihe. He's tried to get him fired multiple times. And then he was also the one, he was the guy who was backing um this attempted coup that happened mm -hmm. back in february and so he's just yeah he's stirring up too much shit and you know Iger's back now for his you know his two-year stint that he's gonna do now before he goes back into retirement and Iger just wants to you know probably wanted to get him out before his stint is over and um yeah he's he's been a bad he's been a really bad influence on this entire this entire company for the longest time and it's good that he's gone because he he's like notoriously cheap where he would make people like reuse like post-it notes and, and like paper other clips office supplies too. yeah and like paper clips and and um he also said that like nobody nobody's interested in a black panther movie or like a captain marvel movie and he just very he, wrong about that yeah like, <laughs> extremely wrong and so um yeah he, it's good he's gone but we feel kind of bad for everybody else because like this is a 
it's 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 across all the divisions of the company, right? It's not just strictly Disney. It's Lucasfilm lost some, Marvel lost some, theme parks lost some. So yes. yeah, mm-hmm. it and a, a lot of this is, and also the, a, a lot of like thousands of those people were in their meta division, actually. Like the you know the metaverse. Are you familiar with that? <laughs> yeah, I know you like are. Their VR division. Yeah, because because the the whole world is bailing out on Zuckerberg's little project. They all were into it until they realized that no one fucking uses it. And so, yeah, all those people who were busy getting all that shit ready for the Disney metaverse are now, you know, job searching and everything that they've been doing for the last year is a, a dead industry, unfortunately, because yeah, VR hasn't taken off quite enough that, you know, everyone is more excited about looking at Nintendo Wii graphics right in front of their eyeballs, because that's what it, it reminded me of. But golly, yeah, that was a barn burner. That's the the Ides of Mouse, the Night of the Long Knives. Everybody got, you know, got a little bit of what little Bobby was throwing out there. And David Zaslav is just fading in the back, just like, I was right. You know, he's...